What's going on guys? My name's Caleb Strackengast. This is Buffalo Creek Outdoors. The name and the title might be a little bit facetious. There's not really a camo out there that's gonna make you a better turkey hunter and make you kill more turkeys. With that being said, I do think there are camo patterns that lend themselves to being better in certain situations. And I'm gonna talk about in this video, the camo that I've selected, uh, the brands that I've selected, kind of my whole system that gets me from point A to point B from day one of the season to the very end of turkey season. In some states, that's on into June. But this is gonna be my full system. Let's jump on into it. First morning, first morning. Got him, baby! Woo! Yes, sir. All right guys, so I've got my system, everything that I wear from day one to the very end of season. From this year, I'll probably be hunting North Carolina, Kentucky, and more than likely, at least one point in time, South Carolina. So with that being said, this will get me through those three states. If you hunt somewhere else, the system may be a little bit different. If you're farther north, it's probably gonna be a lot more cold weather stuff. If you're farther south, you're probably gonna ditch a lot of this cold weather stuff. So it's gonna be very dependent on your situation and where you are in the country. I've chosen to go mostly with Sitka gear. The name and the title kind of hints that I'm using Sitka gear, but I'm also using other gear as well. I'm not sponsored by anybody, but the archery shop does carry Sitka gear. Um, so I am able to get stuff at a discount through them sometimes but i'm also able to get almost the same military discount through sitka first light and stone glacier i use bits and pieces of each but i kind of stick mostly to sitka because i like their system i like their camo patterns uh, for turkey season especially i do like wearing camo i have worn solids in the past this year i'm really gonna mainly wear camo for self-filming it's really tough anyway to get any amount of movement in without the turkey seeing you and i do think that camo helps in that situation on my elk hunts maybe not sometimes whitetail hunting maybe not but i do believe that these camo patterns work i prefer subalpine and timber that's the two camo patterns that i really really like in the areas that i hunt um, Subalpine is probably what I lean to the most because I also wear some of this system on my elk hunts and that pattern blends in the best in those situations out west for me. That and like a tan color really blends in well out there. But subalpine overall is my favorite camo pattern on the market today. Um, timber looks extremely well when you're back in the woods and the way the backdrop is here behind me right now timber would definitely be the best pattern for that situation. But like I said, I like to wear my systems for multiple seasons. This is just what I've selected for turkey season. This year, I will not be running a turkey vest. I'm gonna be running this Sitka, um, I think this is the tool bucket. I don't even know that they make this anymore. You can't see it on their website in Subalpine. They make it in Elevated 2. Uh, but I, I was able to snag one of these from the archery shop and in the subalpine pattern. The main reason I'm going away from a turkey vest is because with my camera gear, tripod, cameras, GoPros, things like that, it's really hard to get all that equipment in a, in a turkey vest and make that turkey vest still be comfortable. The other issue that I'm having is when I've got my vest on and my stuff's in my back, I gotta take my vest off to get to it. So I'm gonna try running a backpack this year and I'm just gonna carry a seat cushion with me or possibly like a little gobbler chair, depending on what situation I am, I'm in and how far back in there I'm going. Uh, so that's the, back, the pack that I'm gonna be using this year. It seems like it's gonna work. I've kind of taken it out and done some test runs with it. I think that's gonna be an awesome system. It's definitely a lot more comfortable for me once I get some weight in it than a turkey vest is. All right, so from the pack, let's go ahead and talk about the pants and the layering that I'll be using underneath those pants. 
Um, so these are just a set of thin, cheap Badlands um, bamboo leggings. I've worn these things for I don't know how many years. I love these things, they're just super thin, but it's enough to knock the edge off if it's really cool in the morning. Another set of bottoms that I like to have in my box, I have a box that I have all this in and I just carry it in my car with me no matter where I go. These are just some thin Russell fleece pants that have done extremely well for the weight. These, these two items are extremely light. And then if I know I'm going to be slightly cool in the mornings and by eight or nine o'clock I'm taking shedding layers, I've got some first light, I don't even remember what these are called, the kilns maybe, kiln 250s. These are their zip off bottoms. I've got these so if I'm going along and I just wanna take my layers off, I can just zip these off and uh, stick them in my pack and go. More than likely, this will be the system that I'm running mostly because it's not gonna be that cold in the mornings for the most part. I can run these little these base layers from first light and uh, just zip them off without having to take my boots all the way off. That's all I've got in my box for my bottom layers. So let's talk about the pants. So to hold up my pants, I've got an Arcadia or Arcade belt. Not really the most happy with this belt, it's okay. It's not that I wouldn't recommend it, it's just that it's so wide that it barely fits through the Sitka pant loops. I'm still on the hunt for a really good backpacking belt. Um, so if any of you guys have any recommendations for a backpacking or elk hunting belt that I can also wear turkey hunting, whitetail hunting, whatever it is, something that's stretchy, something that holds up, uh, it's very durable and something that holds my pants up. Uh, it keeps my pack from pushing my pants down. Uh, if you guys have any recommendations, shoot, shoot, if you guys have any recommendations for a really good backcountry backpacking belt, comment down below and let me know because I'm still in the market for a really good belt. Pants. These are gonna be the Sitka mountain pants. These are my do-all, go, go everywhere type pant. Uh, if it's gonna be a day where it's gonna be cooler or windy, these will be the pants that I've got on. And then these are something that I'm really excited about. I actually purchased these uh, like two weeks ago. These are the intercept pants. Um, and these are more geared towards an elk hunting pant, but I bought these for that for my elk hunting trips as well as early season whitetail and turkey hunting. So if I'm going through a bunch of briars, or I'm going to be busting brush for turkey season. I probably won't wear these intercepts. 99% of the time though, this is what I'm going to have on this spring is going to be these intercept pants. Now Sitka does make an Equinox, Equinox guard pant. That was the one that I really looked at getting, but then as I sat there and thought about it, uh, I wear a tick gaiter anyway. Um, so that was really the upside to me for those pants was the tuck in um, tick guard at the bottom. But these intercepts are something that I'm gonna wear a lot more throughout the season other than just in turkey season. But the thing I like about them for turkey season is they have this grid, like this gridded material on the inside to help with breathability. So they should breathe well on those hot days but they also have these hip zips where you can open up and dump heat because I know here in North Carolina, about halfway through April, it starts getting hot. Um, so that's the main reason why I've got these. The mountain pants have been what I've been wearing. Those in the Timberlines have been what I've been wearing in the past. I'm happy to have a thinner set of pants to wear this spring. So that's the intercept is probably gonna be my go-to the mountain pants gonna be my backup. Uh, if you've watched my videos in the past, you know I've got a set of Timberlines that are green, that, that moss color. I love those pants, absolutely love those pants, but they do get hot at some at points in the season. And like I said, I'm trying to go to mostly a all camo setup this year um, since I am self filming and it makes it a lot easier to stay hidden when you have that camo permethrin. Go get the Sawyer's permethrin in a spray bottle and spray your gear down. Ever since I started doing that, I haven't had tick issues. I get ticks on me like crazy, but ever since I started spraying all my gear down with that permethrin at the beginning of the season, I haven't had issues. That's the big benefit to the Equinox guard system because it already is treated. But for me, I just go get the permethrin in the spray and spray my gear down one time in the spring and that gets me through the spring. Next to skin, uh, I'll be either wearing the core lightweight hoodie in subalpine. I'll probably have a t-shirt on under that, but as it does get hotter into the season, I'll probably just have that on. 
And then I also have an Equinox Guard in timber, uh, long sleeve hoodie as well. And I love this hoodie because it is extremely, extremely thin. Uh, when it gets into the real hot days, this is definitely what I'll be having. I'll have on as the Equinox Guard. Um, but either one of these are essentially very similar items. Um, with the thinness, I would say going to the Equinox Guard and durability, I would say probably goes to the um, the lightweight hoodie. But either one of these will be on at some point uh, during the day. Uh, probably, like I said, I'll run a t-shirt on under either one of these. But um, like I said, when it does get hot, uh, I'll probably just wear either one of those next to skin. And really past that, like these shirts here are gonna be on me all the time. One of these shirts I'll probably be wearing all the time. The rest of this system that I'm gonna talk about is gonna be case by case basis. Um, if it's cooler, if it's cold, if it's hot, all this is gonna change. Um, one thing that I'll have in the box is the core heavyweight hoodie. This has been a staple in my bag for several years. I'll also have the jet stream vest for those windy days where it's not cold enough for a jacket, but it's cold enough to try to break some wind. I'll have that jet stream. Uh, and if I'm packing way back in on public or whatever, the jet stream vest will probably be in my pack on those really cold days. But other than that, I probably won't wear it a whole lot. Uh, an item that I'm super excited about is another item that I bought a couple weeks ago, and this is the ambient jacket. So I elected to go with the jacket over the hoodie because of the zipper. Uh, the jacket has the full zip. It added about two ounces to the setup um, over the hoodie. But one thing about it is the, the biggest reason was the hoodie doesn't have pockets and it only zips about halfway down. So ease of on and off, quickness of on and off, and having those hand pockets. This was an item, another item that I bought for elk hunting, but also wanted to use for other scenarios. So this is gonna be an item that I'm really gonna key in on this spring, on those chilly mornings, I'll just throw this on. It's super lightweight. I can throw it in my pack uh, as it heats up and kind of go from there. Another item that's gonna be very, very case-by-case -case basis is the Jetstream jacket. Um, this jacket, honestly, I like the jacket, but I kinda wish I wouldn't have spent the money on this jacket, just because I don't wear it all that much. Like, there's not that many situations where that jacket is the best thing that I have. There are a few, like turkey season, uh, those cooler mornings where I don't need to bust or break rain I'll use this to break the wind. This is in my box just in case I need it, but I won't wear this a whole lot this spring. Uh, another set of items that's gonna be in my bag or in my box in my car are gonna be my rain gear. These are both dew point, it's a dew point jacket and a dew point set of pants from Sika. I wear or bring both of those with me because if I'm going way back in, there's a chance of rain, I'll throw those in my pack uh, I probably won't walk in them, mainly because I don't want to tear them up. That's really my backpack and rain gear setup. But it's so lightweight, it's kind of hard not to keep in the car, just in case there's a lot of rain. Opening day last year, Hunter and I hunted and pouring down rain all day, and I had those on and I stayed bone dry. Now all my other gear was wet, but I was bone dry. So I definitely keep those with me, and I like the rain. I like the turkey hunt in the rain. Um, I'll try to get on a field where those turkeys can get out there in that field in that wide open. I don't know what it is, if it's the worms, if it's the bugs, if it's just being out in the open where their senses can help them. Uh, but turkeys like to be out in these fields around here in the rain. So if they're out in the field, so am I. So I'll have my rain gear with me. All right, so from rain gear, let's talk about accessories. Gotta have my trusty handy uh, lucky hat. This was my grandpa's hat before he passed away his old Buffalo Creek outdoors hat. And uh, I've killed several turkeys, bunch of deer, all kinds of stuff. I've been wearing this hat since he's passed away. It's got his initials in it. Uh, and I've just added to the tally marks on the bottom of this bill. So I uh, hope to add some more this spring. Nothing special there, it's just special to me. Just his old, my grandpa's old Buffalo Creek outdoors hat. Uh, I'll have a toboggan. Uh, it's just a, one of the fleece military issued toboggans that I've got from the military. Uh, super lightweight, 
keeps my ears warm. I got big old ears, so I got to keep those things warm, keep the wind off of them. Uh, I'll have these. These are some Black Ovis uh, Merino fingerless gloves. Uh, it's got three fingers, and then the index and thumb are exposed. I'll have those, and then I'll probably wear these the most. These are the Equinox Guard uh, fingerless gloves. Same thing, your index finger and your thumb are exposed for mainly for me for running my camera and doing using my camera equipment that's why i keep mine that's why i wear the fingerless gloves like that and then these i don't even know what brand these are i have no idea i've had these things for probably 20 years but anyway they're some type of a they're like a gator and they seem to work pretty well with keeping the ticks out of my pants they just go over they're super lightweight they're not going to bust briars they're not going to really protect much they just keep the ticks out of my pants for the most part uh, and then boots wise these are going to be what i'll wear 99 percent of the time these are the crispy laponias the original laponias uh, i've had these for several years they're just a lightweight waterproof gore-tex boot they're comfortable i can hike and walk all day long in those and then really the last thing for my setup is going to be just a set of rubber boots i don't even i think these are cabela's brand pretty comfortable I uh, don't really like walking all day in them, but if it's wet going through, you know, wheat fields or whatever, I'll have those on just to keep my pants from getting so wet. And that's pretty much it, guys. You know, I'll have a binocular harness, uh, you know, my rangefinder and all that stuff. But as far as clothing goes, this is going to be, this is the system that gets me from day one to the end of the season for turkey season. So like I said, guys, there's not a camo out there that's going to make you a better turkey hunter. There are camo clothing out. There is camo clothing out there that I think is better than others. I really, really like the system that I have. It's not all Sitka, but it's mostly Sitka um, because I believe in their product and I really like the clothing that they offer for multiple seasons. Turkey, deer, and elk are my main three, and that's what I kind of gear my system towards. I don't really like buying gear that I can only wear for one season. I do sometimes. But for the most part, I like to wear my system throughout the year. So if you have any questions, guys, comment down below. If there's anything that you recommend that I get or change, comment down below. Like I said, I'm looking for a belt. If you guys can tell me the best backpacking belt out there that, in your opinions, comment them down below. If there's anything you see in my system that you'd recommend changing, if you don't like Sitka, if you don't like the pattern, comment down below. Like if you think there's a better pattern out there that really makes a difference for turkey or if you don't even think camo makes a difference for you guys that like solids uh comment down below and let me know like without a shadow of a doubt solids are fine for turkeys because one thing i will say it is easier to see ticks on your pants on a solid pair of pants over camo pants i appreciate you watching this video thanks for sticking along with buffalo creek outdoors and keeping along with what i've got going on i hope you enjoy it i hope you get something out of it Please like and subscribe. Remember to live your life to the fullest and use your passions to bless others. Good luck out there this turkey season. We'll see you on the next one.